I loves me some one degree mm, of chunky B. have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? The panel then includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning into One Degree of Chunky B. We are uh, in a garage of love. And I tell you what, you know Adler and I and, and, and Spencer over here, we love to celebrate cool things out of our own town, Venice. And today we are lucky enough to have two cats that, uh, one, I've known forever, and uh, two, I've known just because he's a phenomenal bartender at one of the coolest places in Venice. But before we talk to these cats, right across the street, right across the table, he goes by the name of Gary Adler. Adler, say hello. Hi, Chunky. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All great right. Pitch, man. Okay, the Wizard of the Knobs, please say hello to the great Travis Spencer. The knobs, knobs, the knobs. Knobs. <laughs> All right, check this out. Even if you're not from Venice, even if you're not from California, I don't care where you're from, you're going to dig this because these guys had a vision and they moved forward on it, and it's beer. I want you to give a big round of applause for Christian, hold on, hold on, Warren, Christian Warren, and John Henry Binder. Everybody. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah. So Who are these guys, Chunk? You guys, welcome. Welcome to the Garage of Love. Now, John Henry is yeah. um, in, in the hat. And uh, Christian, you uh, and John Henry got together and said, fuck it. I want some strong beer. I want some Venice beer. I want, I want a brand that can stand up for who you represent and your Venice. Tell me a little bit about your beginning thought process. Uh, well, we were at the end of a shift at uh, James Beach one night. Right. And we were discussing how much our love for beer and how Venice, the best town in uh, America, at least the best beach town, yep. was lacking of its own brewery. So... Uh, we were just sipping on some uh, Sierra Nevadas and talking about how we needed a beer. And I told the story about a mutual friend of ours who went to a party in the Venice Canals. Right. He got so drunk, he woke up covered in ducks. <laughs> and so we're talking about a brewery. We're talking about the ducks and a Venice duck brewery is born. Really? It, it, it came that simple. You, you had a guy passed out. He woke up with ducks and you said, fuck it. Let's get some beer going. Another local bartender who worked at Hal's Bar and Grill back in the 90s. Right. Uh, I always yeah. thought it was funny too when I was living in Venice back in the early 90s yeah. uh, before uh, Abbot Kinney exploded into what it is now. Yep. Um, we would, uh, you know, you'd take notice of the little ducks and the families that would be crossing Venice Boulevard and yeah. certainly you never wanted to hit those ducks because God, that could be, you know, I don't know, 20 years of bad luck or something. But I remember they were going to one year there was some disease or some mallard problem. Yeah, they were going to yeah. yeah, get that. rid of Everyone all the ducks. wanted to kill the ducks. Well, no, and that. now there was like this uprising, and that's when I knew like Venice certainly was its own unique spot because I think, you know, at that time there was like mass killings in Yugoslavia and stuff like that of people, but the Venice people were very concerned about the ducks, and I thought, oh, yeah. there's something here. Yeah. Yeah. These ducks represent something. So That yeah, is for, so funny because people truly in the canals yeah. love their ducks. That's the yeah. deal, yeah. They you adopt know, them and they do a whole thing. What do you, th what do you think, Adam? I'm saying, and back it up even further, for people who don't know why we call it Venice, yes. Abbott Kinney came here and carved a bunch of canals Thank out you. to make yep. it look like Venice, Thank you. Italy. Thank you. Yep. And what's funny is yeah. I do get people that go, Jay, Venice, what's with the ducks? And I kind of know that they really aren't from Venice. And right. I go, well, because you right. would know, you'd have some story or moment with the ducks that I don't even need to know about, but you would know the <laughs> ducks. <laughs> so yeah. anyway. Let's talk about the beer. What are we drinking here, John Henry? Uh, yeah. We're drinking our IPA. It's a, it's a real robust uh, West Coast, uh, super, super hoppy. We like the hops. And uh, right now in America, actually, the number one style of craft beer is IPA. And for those of you that don't know, IPA stands for Indian Pale Ale. Yep. And when the Brits had colonized the world, and uh, we're doing their thing. They used to ship over a lot of beer to their soldiers. And the way to preserve the beer was through this sort of extra dose of hops. And uh, then many, many, many years later, it became kind of a cool thing to over hop your beer. And now here in America, and certainly on the West Coast and up in Oregon and, and Washington, 
uh, we really tend to drink a lot of IPA, super hoppy. Right. And hops, for those of you who don't know, very similar to marijuana, the buds, uh, the plants are cousins, I believe. So, yeah. um, very there similar strain. Uh, yeah. They flower in the fall, just like the, the marijuana leaves. There you go. And they really work well together once they're processed. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I've, been, I've been told. I've been told. They, I've work, been told. they work better at together. Allegedly. All right. <laughs> so, uh, the Venice Duck Brewery right now has three main beers coming out. Is, yes. Right? So right. you have the Dogtown, yep. Dogtown Duck, sure. which um, we're, we're sipping on right now. Right. Oh. There you go. Hello. <laughs> and then um, the Stoner Duck. Now, is that going into the hops and marijuana combination thing? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen. And then you've got the, uh, the Lucky Duck. And uh, how'd you guys come around the flavors? Did you test? Did you go? Did you like, okay, kind of, did you have any say? Who's the in... brewmaster here? Thank, thank you. There, there you go. go. Good question. Very good question. Uh, uh, re- a brother of a really good friend of ours. and we... Another bartender. We always try to keep it within bartenders. No right? doubt. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's the way it is. It's a fraternity. You guys and are professional. Yeah. So we articulated what we wanted uh, well, uh, in, each, in each beer. And so we went and sampled hundreds of beers, discussed what we liked, what we didn't like. And he came up with these recipes. Then we sampled them, sent them back. We like this, change that, and then that's how we ended up with these recipes we have now. So the uh, yeah, the Stoner Duck is the Nut Brown Hemp Ale. That's the mm. next one we're going to release. And actually, these styles will kind of all fall along with uh, the fact that you could find any type of these characters somewhere in Venice. So you're certainly going to see a Stoner Duck. Hello. Or, uh, hopefully a Lucky. Duck, a Lucky Duck. Or uh, you know someone that <laughs> or a might Dogtown be. Duck. Or a Dogtown Duck. I gotta and, say, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of strong beer, and this is not strong. Is freaking delicious. You know, you know I'm a Bud I mean? Light guy, yeah. and yeah. I'm enjoying this, yeah. and I'm not just kissing up. Christian, uh, John Henry, you guys got something going on yeah, here. Nice work, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, we're so it's exciting times for you guys, right? Yes, it is. Yes, every exciting. every week, every day, is <laughs> presents new challenges. And tell new, uh, tell our audience at home if they wanted to find a Dogtown Duck, where would they go? Yeah, we got some places now. Uh, Start in, listening to them. Oh yeah, we got Simon's uh, Provisions in the bottle. That's a local, a new little local uh, beer and wine and cheese shop on. Uh, on Rose Ave, but if okay. you want to go to a, a local bar, James Beach, Danny's Deli, Canal Club, Melody Bar and Grill up in Westchester, The Counter Burger in Century City, Santa Monica, and Marina, Tarn Roses, The Village Idiot. You're kidding. Upper wow. West, Mercedes, so you guys starting Mercedes to see, uh, Grill, you guys starting to see a little black, a little prop in here? No, I'm just mm. getting back aches because we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're delivering the kegs ourselves. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All exactly. right. It's all gorilla right now. Yeah, we quickly yeah. learned about self distribution. Let me tell you, sign no. up with the bigger guys. Okay, so you're uh, getting orders. Yep. yep. And then you go back and say, guys, we need X yeah. amount of cases. And, and, and what we're doing right now, just to let you know, we started off, we've started off as a contract brewery. So we're working with a brewery that's up in uh, Silicon Valley, up near uh, Apple, as a matter of fact. It's up in uh, Mountain View. So these guys, it's Hermitage Brewery. They've been great. A lot of beer companies, a lot of micro brews, when they start, We'll do it this way. We tried to raise enough money originally, and we were we were ambitious. We yeah. thought we could, you know, get a half a million like that. It's taking us a little longer, sure. But uh, we wanted to open up something like right here, actually, right next door to your house here, Chunky. No, really? I mean it, <laughs> that'd be perfect. Uh, yeah, <laughs> please don't. Uh, do I that. would be digging a tunnel. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but we are <laughs> we are, we're in the process of trying to, to raise money for brick and mortar. But in the meantime, these guys are making good beer for us, and it's our recipes. They ship it down, we store it, we get it out there, and here we go. Yeah, I, initially we were against the contract brew idea, but after doing some research, Sam Adams started that way. They did it for the first 12 years. Brooklyn Brewery, there's a lot of breweries out there that started that way. And we would like the brick and mortar in Venice, but it's a zoning issue. So we just need to pull a variance. We're coming close to either one spot in Venice or in Playa Vista right now. So and that's I, to come. Yeah, and also that's the other thing, too. One of the things that got us into this whole movement here is we knew that in San Diego, which is pretty much a mecca of beer and, and good mm. beer and breweries, there's probably 190 of them. Right. At one point, I think, a couple of years ago, there were only like 23 breweries in L.A., which is almost unthinkable given the size of L.A., However, the way that the city's been drawn up and the way that the, they sort of set these urban sprawls up, there are certain areas you can do things that are industrial. And this is considered right. just like you're making a T-shirt, you're making beer. Right, right. I but prefer- you want to bring it home. Oh, yeah. No, we're oh, bringing yeah. it home. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing this podcast for, hopefully, is yep. that we hear we get through to someone out there that's ready to, you know, slap a big check. I think, listen, six or seven people will go by after that's this. Good. I know. Oh, hey, you're going to buy, you're going to sell another six pack after this okay. podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> let me ask you this, and we've done this on the air yeah. before. With our, you know, we got a we got a music sponsor the last time we had right. Winston Giles on. Sure. Can yeah. we do a deal on the air here? If you if you keep our fridge full, can we just keep pumping <laughs> your uh, keep pumping your beer? Yeah, Is you that bring us something out. Yeah, can yeah, we? Can we yes. At every yes. podcast, we will mention. Uh, yeah, the Venice yeah. Duck Brewery. Yeah. Or Did we just, just get yeah. our first sponsor? Hey. I think go. it's official, people. Round of applause for <laughs> Venice Duck. Adler working right in there. Yeah. God, he's good. Right? Yeah. Executive yeah. producer right there. Don't he's... bother me. I'm the executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Well, you guys, this is, first of all, John Henry, I've known you forever. Yes. Uh, but I remember uh, a time back where you just were walking around with a piece of paper going, I've got an idea for a beer. <laughs> And then I'm saying, thank like, you for reminding me of those easier days. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you know it's funny. We uh, and then a bunch of people when we released, we launched about six months ago. They uh, they said to me, "Well, you know, we never really heard you talk about this." And well, people that know me know that I do like to talk. Uh, <laughs> this was one of those things in my life that I thought I'd keep a lid on, which is almost impossible for me to do. Right. Um, but, I, I, I concur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I kind of kept it close to the vest, so to speak. But we. Uh, we knew we had something. I think also for us, um, being on the front lines of bartending for so long, there has been this movement now. This, I'm telling you, man. You know, people under 30 years old, millennial, whatever you want to call them. I don't really tend to categorize people, but you know, everyone has a hard drive on them now. Everyone's got a phone, so mm. you're getting people so informed. It's similar to wine, like in the late 90s. I'd have people come to the bar and they'd want to talk about Cabernets and Napa and this year and this vintage and all this, and it was almost more to bullshit the person they were with to try to get you know sure. laid yeah, right. by and. Uh, with beer, though, two people are like, well, I like this style, or they want to talk about it more. They want to, you know, I mean, the day is chunky of, you know, Bud and Bud Lighter. I mean, still those guys dominate the market, but yeah, um, I know But it. this craft thing is is encroaching. So, no so doubt. You think it's left coast, right coast, or is it all I, over? No, it's all over. It's Actually, all over you'd now. be surprised. It's, yeah, I mean, in Wisconsin, it's all over, man. People are just kind of, you know, flocking to their local brew scene. Do you think it's taste or more alcohol content? Uh, I think it's a common, I think, you know, it's funny, and this might happen to you guys since we're going to sponsor you now. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> you'll get used to tasting a beer that's got more complexity like mm. this. Yep. So for me, and I used to, do. I can crush Miller Lights and Coronas. Don't sure. get me wrong. You know? I've seen you. But, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, but I, those now, I kind of like my palate, man. I mean, you know, they you just you want something a little more. Yeah. So And it pairs yeah. well with all kinds of, you know, when you're going to, you know, this whole food pairing thing that everyone's into you now, know, too. You know? you know what I admire? I admire anyone who has an idea and follows through it. Thank you. Yeah, and, no doubt. And, and, you know, you have the idea, and now you have this. And it's fantastic. You gave me goosebumps again. This motherfucker makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. Shin bumps. Shin bumps. And, and, and that's, Shin bumps. Right. And listen, you know, the show is one degree, one degree of Chunky B. And it's um, the fact that uh, Adler thinks I know everybody. He does know everybody. <laughs> Except for Kevin Bacon. Except for Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I know him. Yeah. Well, you know that our goal on the show is to have Kevin sitting there. We got him. We because got him. Chunky does know every single human being on the planet except for Kevin Bacon. Right. I want to let you know who also I adore and admire. I love John Henry's mother. Thank yeah. you. Thank Sharon you, daughter, is, uh, and I can tell you some of the greatest moments I've had. Sharon and I have shared um, multiple Halloween evenings. Yes. Where we have an open house here and uh, Sharon's grandkids uh, John Henry's brothers uh, and, 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 and his daughters. Yeah, um, sure. It's a big open thing and all the kids and the parents go out and then year after year, Sharon and I. Dude, that's, isn't she? She's, a, she's amazing. She's a hell of a listener. She's a hottie yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she dances she, like she, nobody's like to hear that at She's a hottie. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, yeah. mom is right. mom. And by the way, speaking <laughs> of mom, do we yeah. get into it now or do we get into it after the break? Let's get into it after the break, but okay. I want to tell you something. It was the craziest thing. I knew John Henry, right, over at uh, James Beach. Then I also knew this hottie named Stephanie who was the bartender at Hama Sushi, <laughs> nice. like, like a nine iron away, right? <laughs> those two, those two didn't That's even know each other. That's a three wood for me, by the way. That's a three wood for me. <laughs> That's a three wood, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so um, I knew both of them, and I was... Uh, I was flirting with Stephanie, and I, I know she was, you know, you know, educating herself to be a teacher, and and I thought she was absolutely adorable. Never asked her out, never, you know, crossed that line. She was my bartender, <laughs> and she served me my sushi in the back patio of Hamas. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, I hear John Henry and Stephanie are starting <laughs> yeah. a date. I'm like, fuck. What, 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 what? 
I gotta, I gotta fix those two up. I know both of them. I, I felt like I, I could have been Cupid. You just missed out on one more best man speech. <laughs> <laughs> I would never go up against uh, we, we, Josh we, we, Binder. We would have to name our daughter Chunkyetta. Chunkyetta. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, <laughs> let me, let me ask them this: If people were to go online. Yeah. To find out more about their beer, where would they go? VeniceDuckBrewery.com. VeniceDuckBrewery.com. Or follow us on Twitter or follow us on Facebook. And how do we follow you on Facebook and Twitter? Christian? Uh, you look for us, VeniceDuck on Facebook and uh, VeniceDuckBrewery on Twitter. Okay. Awesome. Have you guys ever thought about a mail order? Um, like know bride, you, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mail order. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think about scoring chicks on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the government is yeah. tough on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some breweries are doing that. It's a uh, packaging and a bunch of bullshit. Y- yeah, no, I think you have to though. There's still, uh, in terms of shipping and stuff, you have to. There's, there's, yeah, uh, I mean, it, initially that was one of our concepts because Venice Beach is such a uh, destination for so many tourists. But then the legalities and the age uh, thing. So we're still, you know, that's that's a ways off. We're just going to yeah. establish our brand locally. When the tourists come here, they're going to ask for the local beer, and that's us. And right. now, um, ultimately, you know, the end game. Which is? You know, we talked about the big boys. Now, what if a big boy comes in and goes, hey, man, we want your beer? Uh, we would say no. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call bullshit. I say, hey, give me hey, give me know. a number. Everything's hey. negotiable. Yeah, well, you know. I, well, um, for us, really, it's, yeah, if, you, if someone wants to partner up with us and we can uh, oversee the quality, we just never want to lose the quality of our beer because that happens to so many breweries out there. I like, got... Uh, like AB comes by or uh, Coors and they buy out the brewery, the quality goes down because it's yeah. mass produced. Yeah. We just don't want to see that happen to our product if we partner up with someone. You know, so, you know something? That is like a, a beer purist, which, which, is, which is very cool. We've got a series more questions, and we're going to no. go, Christian, don't get me wrong. I, I just don't know you as well as I do. Sure, John yeah. Henry. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure I served you. I used to work at Baja Cantina. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. In the mid-90s to, oh, like, 95 Can to I? 01. Holy so that's shit. why you guys are so me? familiar oh, to me. Yeah. I was, you know, that's I where I met my wife. Yeah. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. I get that a lot. Yeah. I, I get people. <laughs> they used to come to the bar. I served them their first drink. And they, oh, we met at the Baja, and we're married because of you. Yeah. yeah. And oh, I boy. get that same thing. Except then they tell me they got divorced, and then they're in a bitter right. dispute. And they're remarried. One of them's in rehab, and the other one's dying of high blood pressure. All right. You guys, one degree of Chunky B. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back with this chaotic brewery. <laughs> hey, you guys, this week's music is Funky Zen Groove by Tap Foo. Now, you can find this and hundreds of more cool tracks at playupmusic.com. You guys have got to check out our brand new sponsor, Venice Duck Brewery. You want to get your quack on? Taste some of this. Hey, I'm Christian Warren. And I'm John Henry Binder. And we're Venice Duck Brewery. (laughs) And we are on one degree of chunky. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the garage of love. You are listening to One Degree of Chunky B. We got Christian Warren and, of course, the great John Henry Binder. They're coming out with something very special. It's already out, but just dial into Venice Duck Brewery. Uh, They got three different IPAs. And I want to let you know, and if, if you know me, I'm a Bud Light kind of guy. Guess why? <laughs> it's one IPA, a nut brown. And oh, oh okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all good. It's all right. All right. Listen, that's what you do. You keep me on point, people. Keep yeah, me on point. Yeah. Um, bottom line, it's good. And I'm, you know, I'll drink, I'll drink that, you know, that pee water. But it, I think, and I'm not even, I'm not even kissing up. I think you are actually changing. Uh, the way I bit. taste beer, yeah, it's cool. fucking delicious. That's right? what we're out to do. But, chase one, because it's one got like multiple flavors. It's, it's it actually, yeah. you know, you got yeah. Bud Light, and boom, you just hitting that one thing. It, it, it dances on the tongue, yep. and, and and it's got eight point six, so I can drop my. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, by the way. Yeah, it's only six point eight, but it was like you were talking about your, you know, like actually I'm uh, this big. Yeah. yeah, that was good. All right, you guys. Um, first of all. We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about uh, by the time we end this thing, definitely how to clearly dial into where you are and 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 how right. we can enjoy more beverages. Cool. But I want to uh, Christian and don't be jealous. But I want to uh, give my undivided attention to John Henry Finder. <laughs> oh God. Okay, John Henry. Uh, known you for twenty what, how how many years? Twenty years probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, John are. Henry's got uh, a brother by the name of Josh. And Josh, if you're looking, congratulations on passing the captain's uh, yeah, test. Brother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's he still boy. has he still has a little ways to go. Yeah. But um, we were up where were we? We were up in Mammoth. Right uh, over the holidays, and there's Josh with his freaking index cards studying, <laughs> for um, the test, right? and I'm like, I, I didn't have the balls to say, put the shit down and I let's know. go. But I no, know. it, it paid was, off. It, it paid, paid off, off. and yeah. we got plenty of skiing in. Yeah, and 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 I vacation. We my family vacations regularly on you with uh, your brother's uh, family, yeah. which I love. But let's slide into uh, your hand in the cookie jar of Hollywood. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when in Rome. Matter of fact, I was hanging out with Lori Petty yesterday. She enjoys Venice Duck Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> as she does some other things as well, like wine and whatever. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we, my brother and I, my brother's a firefighter, like Chunky said, and uh, which is always kind of funny when I'm working the bar and someone's decided to take a face plant in front of the bar out front yeah. and the firefighters come down and they give me a special nod like, great job on your work, John Henry. <laughs> we will now take over the stuff that your brother trained us to do. So there's a little kind of symbiotic stuff there with my brother and I. But no, we, um, we were raised by a, a good man, John, my father, our father, who's a writer, who's been a writer in Hollywood and... Uh, he, uh, you know, people, it's funny, people will say to me sometimes, you know, when did you start bartending? And I'm thinking to myself, well, I did used to open a bottle of wine for my father at about <laughs> noon every once in a while when he was trying to hammer out a new plot line for something. <laughs> but, you know, hey, I mean, you know, we're all bohemians here. It was kind of like part of the deal. And, uh, and then, yeah, and our mother was a dancer, a modern dancer, which is kind of a not your typical dancing you would see on MTV or maybe at your local strip club, but um, no, she was in the art world. <laughs> yep. uh, let's keep it that way, damn it. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so Josh and I were kind of, you know, these sort of funky kids. Uh, Josh, of course, took a very straight line with the firefighter stuff, and I am selling beer now. So, <laughs> got, hang on, though. The homie okay. was at Woodstock. Well, in a way. <laughs> in a way, I was at Woodstock. My uh, my mother was pregnant. It was in uh, that was in August of '69. I was born in December of '69, uh, and yeah, my uh, my father, uh, with his film company, uh, were doing a little film, a little documentary called Woodstock. And, a great, um, a, by the way, yeah. great Anyone documentary. See that? Anyone see that? that yeah, was good. that was good. Gary. I'm joking. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> saw it. Everybody saw it. <laughs> or heard. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so. Uh, so I was in utero, so to speak, mm -hmm. I guess would be nice. the proper way to put it. Um, and um, Do you remember right. any of the bands you heard? I, I just, I <laughs> He's remember. a huge Richie Havens fan. <laughs> Canned Heat, I think, was really <laughs> the one that kind of Country Joe up. and the yeah. Fish, exactly. every time he hears that. I was kicking. I was kicking my mother you know, triumphantly. Uh, that's, but, uh, that's amazing, though. That's, this is yeah. super right. cool. Like, right. Great family lore. Yeah, no, it, that was all good stuff. And then, uh, and then yeah, my dad pursued his... Uh, his writing career, which he had some success at. He did a film called, uh, let's see, he wrote Honeysuckle Rose. I don't know if you remember that. was sure. With Willie yeah. Nelson. Hell yep. yeah. Diane Cannon. Uh. Yep. And then um, he did a movie, Endangered Species, with Joe Beth Williams and Robert Urich. And Joe Beth, I think you actually see her topless in that film. And as a you know impressionable nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. sure. You mean a nine-year-old in... bartender? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> thank you. You're right. Because I started at three. Right, right. And, uh, and then, uh, as a matter of fact, one of, the, one of his claims to fame that actually wasn't uh, too famous for him was he did the first draft of North Dallas 40. He was oh. doing a deal with Robert Altman. And then Altman, as everyone knows, my dad worked with Altman quite a bit, uh, was such a renegade and just basically would tell Hollywood to fuck off whenever he could. Had a deal with Paramount. It fell through. So my dad's script, of course, got pushed to the side. And, uh, you know, we probably would have grown up in a bigger house if that hadn't happened and we would have been a little more well-known. Yeah. But, but, yeah, no, we saw a lot of Hollywood stuff and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of interesting people and folks. And I think that's actually what Venice... And as a matter of fact, hanging out at any one of Chunky B's parties kind of brings to me, <laughs> I feel as home as ever when I'm around all kinds of crazy, oh, interesting yeah, yeah. artist types and unusual uh, points of view. So for me, I'm right at home here. Right one, on. Right one on. degree, baby. One degree. Yeah. Hey, we're going we're gonna to step back in time. Yeah. The Village, New York City. Yes. Very different in the 70s. Let me tell you, I was just there with my family over the holidays. And, uh, you know, when you're in the Village now... You could be basically at the Grove here in, in Hollywood or where it, it's it's so now, it's so dressed up like Disneyland. When my brother and I were there, however, in the 70s. Living. Living on Horatio Street and 8th Avenue. It was uh, every man for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you would go and play at your local schoolyard 
and uh, hopefully not get mugged on the way home, which I was mugged a couple times at knife point before the age of 12. I don't know oh, how many shit. people can say that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, you, you, you being raised in that type of an environment, what people, you know, people now don't know how depressed that city was in the 70s. And then when Giuliani came in and did what he did and put more cops on the street and really busted up a lot that was going on there, uh, it be, you know, it's become this, you know, glorious, you know, economic center of just, just, just street, you know, streets full of stores and bars and restaurants and everything. I got to say right now, the west side of Los Angeles and Holly, the, you know, L.A. is blowing up right now. With no de- doubt. Development yeah. everywhere. Can yeah. I tell and you the next everywhere. Mecca? It's, Pla- it's Playa del Rey. Oh, for sure. And actually, we were over, as, as a matter of fact, the other night, um, I was with my wife at a place called Triple. Yeah, Triple. Which is a nice little, you know, the other thing that people are doing with the craft beer thing is, is that people are not getting liquor license, full liquor license. They're just getting the beer and wine. Sure. And now that beer now has 10.4 and some of the, you know, mm-hmm. the alcohol content has been bumped up and great wines. You can actually have a kind of a cool happening, really good craft beer, great local wine, you know, great California wines. And then you're going to have some hotshot chef because now with all these, you know, reality shows with Top Chef and Number One Chef and all this shit, sure. you have everyone that wants to be a great cook. And, yeah. and so you have really interesting ideas and people that are trying things. So, that's another thing that's changed is, you know, back in the day, I would, I would want to own a, a bar that had a liquor license. Now, I think, you know, if I was going to do it myself, maybe I'd just have a beer and wine and we'd just right. sell the shit out right. of some really good beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know you're bouncing off the walls. I can no, tell I'm you. Want, no, do you want to get a beer? I it, do. It looked like you were about to get up and get a beer. Why don't you yeah. take your headset off? I'm and, empty. No, no. Get, get it in the fridge. All right, you go. Carry on. Oh, okay. I'll, okay. Check it out. Okay. Now, now uh, you leave, you leave um, the village. Then you're coming out here. Right. You're growing up, and you um, you're a bit of a stud as far as sports go. <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of I was kind of uh, I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. Right. But you were I a ball love player. baseball. I love baseball. Right. I love football. Yeah. And okay, so you went up. Would you go up to Pali? Uh, I went to Palisades High School, played baseball there, and then uh, and then in college I went. I bounced around. I went to UC Davis my first year. Uh, I was extremely a fish out of water at UC Davis. I'd been in the village and then I'd been in Pacific Palisades in Brentwood. Right. And I found myself up in Cowtown, USA. Right. Met some great people, loved Davis, learned a lot about everything there, but uh, just didn't feel quite at home. Came back to Santa Monica, Santa Monica yeah. City, played yeah. there for two years and then went to Santa Barbara. Okay, now we got that foundation. Yeah. Got yeah. that foundation. Um, you've been in some movies? You've been some TV shows. <laughs> I've done a little acting. Okay, but lot. you got, I, I can't believe it, and, and we still watch it just because you've got a bit in it. Popeye? <laughs> oh, Seriously. We're going to go there? With we're Robin with there. Robin Williams? Is that this. true? Yeah. Well, I didn't know this. Uh, my, I didn't know. As, I, as I told you before, our mother, as a dancer, that, of course, is a musical, um, which, you know, it's funny when you look back at all of these now, you know, um, cartoon cartoon ideas that have been made into movies. Right. Robert Altman and actually Jules Pfeiffer wrote that screenplay. And Jules Pfeiffer, for people that don't know, had a column, had a, a comic strip in the New Yorker for years in the 70s. A real intellectual guy called Pfeiffer, called Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Life, Pfeiffer Rules, something like that. Jules, really intellectual writer, uh, wrote that screenplay. And then, anyway, long story short, my mom said to my brother and I, we're going to Malta. Now, I know what malt structure is in beer. <laughs> How about that for a segue? Malta is an independent island off the coast of Sicily. Sure. And uh, I don't know, Altman, and I think it was Paramount who did that. Uh, anyway, actually, Altman would just want to go do a film as far away from Hollywood, Hollywood as yeah. possible. Well said, Gary. So he could so, spend a ton of shit. So he could spend money, money yeah. and not have to be accountable to a bunch of producers. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Robert Evans was one of the producers on that. So I did get to see Robert Evans at a certain point in my young childhood. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, Mork and I was going to say Mork. Robin <laughs> was coming off of Mork and Mindy. Yep. So he was. So for me as a child was like, I loved that show. That was a phenomenal show. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Nanu, Nanu. I'm sitting around <laughs> exactly with Robin Williams. And uh, Robin was, uh, you know, was Robin crazy his mind everywhere but what was really funny is that my one memory of Robin that I love is that I used to have this little Coleco football game um, oh, you know I everyone remember. now has you know their eye whatever. oh man they had the and, little uh, white the little red what, dash yeah the yeah. dash thing it was a little <laughs> blip dash deal but it was that great it was cool yeah and uh, w- Robin sort of cornered me we were like sort of in the dressing uh, you know hair wardrobe place and he just like said hey kid give me that game and he s- proceeded to sit there for like 20 minutes just geeked out on this game, which 
Yeah. I didn't quite get it at the time, but now I look back and I go, I don't know what was going on in his head, but he was really loving this game. Uh, uh, and I was sort of like, hey, Robin, i got to take my game back and get out of here. Yeah. But, uh, but it was Robin Williams. And, yeah, it was a great experience with great, great talent on that film. Um, it was kind of ahead of its time. But that was my introduction to Hollywood. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. And I said, forget it. I'm going to make beer. And there I, you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got to love that. By the way, uh, can the, is it okay to tell him where you work? If yeah, people please. want to come say hi to John Henry, can All right. they, can uh, they People from around the, the, yeah. the country may not know, but anyone listening in the L.A. area, if you don't go to this place, you might as well just go join your friends in Al-Qaeda because you're un-American. <laughs> the terrorists will win. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. James Beach. James Venice, California, Beach, James Beach. Yeah. Right yeah. there on um, the, Venice, the, Venice Boulevard, North Venice, Venice Boulevard. and Pacific. Yeah, we've been doing that for a while there. and. Uh, that was featured in a movie, if you don't know, I Love You Man, which was a really funny movie. Yeah, they had the best tacos, and they don't even serve them. <laughs> we yeah. do oh, serve yeah. them. We you do don't serve have them. tacos. We do. <laughs> and I get people from all over the world that eat those tacos now. <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, yeah, man, we've been serving them up. I've been serving them up strong for years. There. All right, craziest yeah. story from James Beach. Go. Um, I don't know about the craziest, but uh, I do remember one time there was a guy that uh, – was a pretty out there guy sitting at my bar and started grabbing at other people's martinis to eat their olives out of the martini. And so then I had to come. We didn't have security at this time. We weren't even that big a place. But I had to come around the bar and start to escort this guy out or somehow get him away from these people that wanted to kill him. And, of course, his pants fell to the ground and he was wearing no underwear. I didn't realize this at first. So then everybody in the whole dining area was like, you know, pointing and, you know, yodeling and the whole thing. And I was like, I'm just trying to get this drunk guy out. And then I quickly saw that he had sort of disrobed. I don't And he loved it, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. And I ran for my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. There you, you, go. you saw his olives. <laughs> he was so fucked up. He was like, I love you. Yeah, I there's love you. That. Yeah, there's, that. A, there's a joke in there uh, somewhere. Yeah, we there's have post production, which is good. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll edit that out. Yeah. I'll tell you what, um, I, w- I want to wrap this up before I do. Uh, Christian, you've got one of the coolest bars in Westchester. You got the coolest bar in the West, Town, uh, West Side. I've been to your establishment without even knowing it was yours. Elaborate. Tell everyone where we can find your place. You work there. <laughs> you bartend there. Right. So if you're familiar with LAX, which I'm sure everyone in LA is, they know where the airport is. And there's a landmark right next to LAX we like to call In N Out Burger. Yep. We are directly across from the In N Out Burger on Sepulveda. Ample free parking in the back. We're one of the last venues that still has live music. Mm-hmm. We're American comfort food with Latin and Asian influence. I'll just tell you really quick about why you need to eat my burger and not In N Out's burger. It's a steak blend, it's a New York. Short rib sirloin uh, blend from a local butcher, and we get our uh, pretzel buns from Rock and Wagner. And it doesn't need all the bells and whistles, but it's great with it. Either way, come in, try a burger, whether you're you know picking up or dropping off at LAX, and drink a duck with it. Yeah, yeah, burger and a duck. Oh my nice. God, nice man, burger and a duck. I feel like this should like we should start out. Are like we a allowed musical. to mention the bar? No, we can't do that. Can we, the name, Melody? No, we Melody. can't. Are we not allowed to? Melody. Are we allowed to? Sure. Melody Bar and Grill. Oh, my God. What are you doing? MelodyLAX.com. There's a controversy. Yeah. Oh, There's really? No controversy. We just, it's yeah. fine. We're Fuck good. it. Because <laughs> I'm going there. Yeah, I mean, we're going right after we're done here. There's a bar down the street from that um, that I'm no longer going to go to. And I'm not going to um, I'm not going to tell you what bar and restaurant it is, but I'll give you the initials. Tomskin Square. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. But I'm going to your joint, the Melody. Yeah, yeah we're going. Oh, my God. I've seen it a million times. I never pulled in. Oh, no. I walked in there one night, and there was this funky blues going on. Yeah. And it was all brothers and sisters from the community. I'm like, this is like almost <laughs> like a, a New Orleans vibe. Dude, it's the most diverse bar in L.A. you got all walks of life, all ages, and everyone's just having a good time. Yeah. Maybe we can do a podcast from there. Dude, I, th- I think it's on. Let's just pick okay. a night, and okay. we'll okay. make it happen. But I want to let you know, it was the first bar that I really felt uh, New Orleans Vibe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and it's it, the, the, you got a great setup. 
yeah. a great venue. You got the, the like the music room, and then goes into the bar area. Yeah. You know, oh, and the, the, the the U bar, right? The, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a horseshoe bar, yeah. and we got two side rooms. One's a dining room slash lounge. The other one is a. A little game room. We have a pool table, a couple of video games, and it's set up uh, tiki style. So and you got the lobster really cool thing. Vibe. You can pull the lobster. Oh yeah, we got that. Uh, you do have the lobster pool. We have the lobster zone. You yeah. can win yourself a lobster. How, how, how much nice. is it? The lobster? It's two bucks a pop. And then, then you guys will here's, cook it. Here's yeah, we'll cook it. Here's the uh, the. Do you trick. know what we're talking about? Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got to aim for the eyes because you want it to wrap around the front of their claws. <laughs> if you go for the tail, it'll wiggle out. And that's what the owner of the machine told me. And my bartender has won over forty of those. Some guys yeah. come in, they know they're getting a lobster, so they order a steak and nice. they got their steak and lobster sure, dinner sure. oh man <laughs> oh, you know lobster. i freaking love this town no doubt because I, honestly and I, and I and no i'm not saying anything other than everyone's got a freaking great story here yep and yep. so don't start moving here people yeah you yeah, know we've got enough <laughs> we have enough people but at the same time listen to chunky b dot tv <laughs> You guys, we're going to wrap this up and we're going to drink some more beer. You guys, once again, ChunkyBee.tv, one degree of Chunky Bee in the garage of love. Christian Warren, thank you so much. Thank you. John Henry Binder, you know I love you like a brother. Adler, if it wasn't for you, I would, I would be living in a van down by Four the river. Films. <laughs> Four Eyed Films.com. Four Eyed Films. Four Eyed Films. Waking up covered in ducks. <laughs> yes, there you go. The ducks are all The over. Wizard of the Knobs. One more time. Every, for can tra- we get everybody doing oh, this now? Travis Spencer. Hey, get us to the four. Let's get us to the four. Get us to the quad shot. Yeah, I got it. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> Ladies time. and gentlemen, thank you so much. Share the love. Let everyone know we're having fun here. I'm hey, Chunky cheers. B, and we are, hold on, everybody. Cheers it up. Cheers it up to your oh, camera. Yeah, yeah. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Woo! Venice Brewery. Woo! We are D-O-N-E. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I just have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? The panel then includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs>